Check Podcasts. Hi, welcome to Chamber Chats. I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. I would like to first of all acknowledge that I live and work in the ancestral, unceded territory of the Lekwungen speaking nations, the Songhees and the Esquimalt. Proud and privileged to live and work alongside them every single day. Uh, this program is made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union. And as always, we are coming to you from the podcasting studio at Czech Television. You may have noticed that people are traveling again. The term you may have heard actually recently is that we are going through a period of revenge travel. People haven't traveled for so long, they're just all over it and they're going to get it going on and get back on the road or in the air or on the rails. I want to talk about travel in general terms right now with another CEO. This one, however, is the Chief Exploration Officer. And she is Kathy Scott with Departures Travel in Oak Bay. Hi, Kathy. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks. Good. You actually have been traveling yourself, too. You've been around. Tell me about your travels. Well, um, I do get around a little bit, of course. I um, I need to do that in order to run the company that I do. Yeah. Um, my last trip was in Europe. I spent about a, a month over there, first of all, in Turkey, and um, spent 10 days there with my, my oldest son. And then I went to uh, Paris, and then I did a lovely river cruise on the Rhone. And from there, went up to Barcelona by train and um, went on another pre-inaugural cruise with a new cruise ship that was being launched. And that was really fun. And then back up to Paris and uh, on way home. So about a month away there. Oh, so that's how you and others, of course, can talk about the trips that you booked for people because you've done it already. You've been there and done that. Right. So we are returning to travel. Um, once the restrictions began lifting with the pandemic, where were the places that people were choosing to go? When your, when your phone started to ring and your email started to ding, where were people going? Yeah, you know, at the very beginning, it, people were, were a bit nervous, so they were sticking a little closer to home. Um, so things like Canadian travel really took off, obviously, once we were allowed to do that. But uh, Mexico was was big. People were ready for some sun. Um, and then, of course, Europe was felt safe to people, so people were kind of heading back over to Europe, more like Portugal, France, a little bit more classic areas, Italy, um, once things got a bit better there. So that sort of was the beginning. Yeah, people are probably going back to places they'd been before because it was familiar to them. A bit of a comfort zone there. I think so. It, um, yeah, for sure. And then Hawaii, of course, is always a classic. Right. For people. So you've you've been traveling. You've been through airports. We've been hearing all kinds of stories, both domestic and international, about delays and problems and things with not enough baggage handlers, not enough flight attendants, not enough border services people. How was that experience for you? And what are you hearing about that from your clients now? Well, I was pretty fortunate when I went. It was it was um, even you know even a month ago, people weren't quite in full force as they are now. You know, summer holidays and people are picking off like crazy. So when I went, it was actually pretty easy. The, fl the flights were fairly full, but um, it, we didn't have any delays or anything like that. Right now, though, our clients are are telling us and we're seeing constantly that it's pretty brutal out there. Um, so you know, yeah, there's there's huge lineups. I think the big thing everybody really needs to understand is plan way more time than you're used to planning and be patient. Um, they're all short staffed. There's, there's, I think I heard today about 50% of Canadian, uh, just, just in, within Canada flights have been either changed or canceled. So that's huge. And when you're looking at the highest season of the year. Yeah. I mean, when you take a look at the way travel was pre pandemic, a lot of those people were displaced from their position as the pandemic raged on, and they therefore found other places to work. And now trying to repatriate, repatriate them back in is kind of a difficult thing. But yeah, so you saw uh, arriving early is one thing. Other things that we need to know about making the process more smooth when we travel? Well, uh, the other piece is that that um, if you can, carry on. Don't don't take your luggage. Um, you know, I, I've learned to pack really late. I can do a two-week vacation and a carry-on now. I'm very strategic about it. I take a carry-on, take a backpack. So my backpack's got stuff in it too. Um, layer up with what you're wearing. And um, if you can, you know, some people can't, depending on what you need to take and where you're going. But that's a, that's a really good thing to do because luggage is getting lost constantly right now. Um, and the other thing is plan a lot of time in between your flights. Normally, there's a, a legal connection time that might range anywhere from an hour to hour and a half, two hours, depending on the destination. But we're seeing 
um, four hours is needed in between because of the, you, you know, especially if you're coming out of security and going back into another security, um, it's people are, are missing flights because of it. Yeah. I th is this going to stay, do you think? How, how long do you think this will be around? You know, the government's working really hard on, on helping with this part of the, part of the issue is the security. Um, so we've already seen them, you know, dropping the need for testing up, you know, coming back that was causing a bottleneck. Um, and the airlines are trying to hire as fast as they can, but have to train people. Uh, so I think we, we're going to see it for a little bit. I'm hopeful that by fall, things will really ease up, but I think summer is going to be a bit tough. You know, we just have to be really patient and do our best to leave lots of time. Um, yeah. I want to come back to what you said a minute ago, too, about packing light. Um, if you're going somewhere and spending all that time in one climate, that's not all that difficult to do, right? But if you're going to be going between climates, that's a bit more of a challenge, probably. It is. I did an experiment. It was my last trip before COVID, and I was going from Tahiti. I was on a Paul Gauguin cruise, which was spectacular okay. for 10 days. And then I went from there down to, um, I was going down to Florida for a conference and so then I needed business attire. So mm -hmm. I I thought, thought long and hard, but I actually managed to do it. I, I took it out. I did it in a carry on and I managed. So, and, and, you know, I, I travel a lot with, um, with women's groups and I've learned a lot from these ladies who are, they get to be masters at it. And so, you know, if you're, if you're careful, you can do it. It's just you know, think about what you take. Yeah, it's it's funny to hear people sometimes say, well, I, I have to pack for three weeks because I'm going to be away for three weeks. Well, you know what? The place you're going probably has laundry or there's a laundry service nearby or a hotel might have a laundromat or there might be a local. And that's part of the local color. I've taken clothing to laundromats in, in towns and cities all over the world. It's kind of a cool experience, actually. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm I'm really good at doing, uh, doing some head laundry <laughs> if I need yeah. to if I'm on a, in a hotel or a cruise ship. I just have to have enough time for it to dry. So as people are now taking a look at traveling once again, there are some places that are a little more prominent now and some new destinations are popping up. I want to talk about that next. We're talking today on Chamber Chats with Kathy Scott. She is the CEO, Chief Exploration Officer with Departures Travel, located on, on the Avenue in Oak Bay. Uh, you and I were talking briefly before we started this session that there are some people booking trips right now to Portugal. And I've heard an awful lot of people lately say, oh yeah, and we're going to Portugal. What's with Portugal? Why that? I think it's perceived as safe. It's, you know, it's sort of on a coast. Um, we haven't heard a lot of political issues there. Um, it's, it's beautiful and it's, it's a little bit less touched than some of the other countries. You know, uh, France and Italy are so popular that they can be really crowded. You hear about uh, Venice, you know, banning tourism and that sort of thing. Um, you don't get that with Portugal. It's much more spread out. Um, and, you know, having just gone through a pandemic, it's nice to know there's more space around you when you're traveling too. People really like that. Uh, so we talk about that. And you've spoken about the usuals like the Rome, Paris, uh, London, uh, now Portugal. Any other places that are kind of emerging right now that may, may not have seen as robust travel in the past? Well, I, I, I'm not sure that I would say places so much. Anywhere that, that is, I mean, people just want to travel. So everywhere is, is getting popular. Um, but what we're seeing is a trend toward different kinds of travel. We, we really see a lot of multi-generational travel happening. Um, it's a great way for people who haven't been able to see each other for a couple of years to gather somewhere, whether it's, you know, whether it's in, in Italy or France or Portugal or, or the Caribbean, um, to travel from different destinations and meet somewhere. And we're seeing people wanting to get together, whether it's friends or, or family. Yeah, and people, of course, that have family in Africa or Asia are finding, finding points in between where they can sort of manage to meet too. Is there anywhere right now where COVID is still a factor? In other words, where it's a deterrent to travel or it's difficult to travel? I think Asia is still, you know, it's just opening back up. I think that's still a little bit more difficult. Um, so that we're finding people wanting to sort of avoid that. Um, that's, I would say that's the biggest thing. Um, are you hearing anything about uh, vaccination requirements being different from one place to another, whether it's COVID related or something else? Because there have always been places where you you have to vaccinate before you go there for various conditions. But what are you hearing about that stuff now? Well, we really refer people to the travel medicine clinic for that because it changes, you know, I would say daily, depending on destination. Um, not really. I think as far as COVID goes, it's most places aren't requiring COVID vaccinations like they were before. But again, you know, those things have to be checked. We check it every single time we book somebody and then prior to them traveling. So 
Um, we have an excellent spot on our website. Actually, people can go to it. It's called COVID. You can go on there and you can take a look and it'll tell you exactly what you need to know. Uh, and the facility you were talking about, Heart Pharmacy, I believe, is one of those. Is that right? They do. Yeah. Yeah. So you can check out all of the status. What's your yeah. website, by the way? DeparturesTravel.com. Oh, well, that's easy. Okay. Now we're talking about all this travel, all these experiences. The other factor we've been hearing about is price. It comes down to supply and demand and workforce, cost of fuel, cost of food, all of those things. So tell me just in general, what's it looking like for air travel, hotels, experiences, price point, pre-pandemic and now post-pandemic? Yes, that's a yeah. big one. It's expensive. It's, you know, what I would say is, um, I, we had a lot of people saying, wow, it's going to get really cheap now because people have been, you know, not wanting to travel. So they're going to want to get people traveling. And I would say, yes, if you talked to me two months ago, I would have said, you know, there's some great pricing down in Mexico. Um, but now everything's just literally skyrocketing. So book early. And, and I think the other thing is book on shoulder season. If you can try not to go in the high season. Um, there's still some reasonable pricing. If you can go, you know, instead of going to Europe and, in July, August, and September, think about October. Yeah. So um, that's that's always a good strategy for saving a bit. But flights are expensive. There's there's still you know there's less of them, and everybody wants to go. Um, and depending on where you're going, think places like Australia, um, Japan, uh, New Zealand, outrageous pricing on flights. Can I, a Canadian flights are actually really expensive. Yeah, uh, I, I guess in some cases the uh, well the airlines the the properties, other people are sort of looking to recoup losses over the last couple of years because the sector was hit really, really hard. Yeah, brutally. Absolutely. And the other piece, especially with properties, is they are suffering with staff issues. You know, um, even locally here in Victoria, I talked to the hoteliers and they're saying the same thing. They can't get staff. So they're actually running rooms at reduced capacity. That So they may have 100 rooms, but they're only... Um, they're only selling, you know, maybe 60 or 80% of them. So those rooms are going to, they're going to make up by charging more for the yeah. rooms. And that's, that's really across the world. They're all doing it. Yeah, they have demand. They just uh, really don't have the capacity. Yeah. You know, we talk about price points though. Um, Canada is one of the last places in the world that has been uh, adopting discount airlines. So we're starting to see some of those appear right now. Uh, YYJ will soon be operating some discount airlines, uh, Swoop and Flare. And a few others have come along lately. Tell me about what that looks like going down the road or flying in the air. Right. Well, I think, you know, it, it does offer those people that, that really, truly don't have um, the funds to do something on a more expensive or on a traditional line, the opportunity to go. However, um, it's not as inexpensive as it looks because those discount airlines charge for everything. And that includes carry-on. So if you, uh, you know, go on a regular Air Canada flight, for example, you, you get a carry-on bag and one personal item. So basically two. Um, and then you pay for your luggage, if, unless you buy a less restricted ticket. The discount carriers, you pay for everything. So there's, you know, there is that. Um, however, it, you can, there's some good, some good pricing that can be had. We, we definitely will sell them um, with caution because there's a lot of cancellations. They don't have the same privileges at the airports that the, the traditional carriers have. So if somebody's coming in a little bit late, they're going to get bumped. So you're going to see more cancellations, more interruptions, um, more misconnects happen with the budget carriers than you are with traditional yeah. carriers. Uh, you and I are doing this over Zoom. So much of the world's business is now being done by Zoom and uh, uh, Microsoft Teams and that sort of thing, which has kind of indicated that business travel may not be as prominent as it was in the past when you can do this instead of flying to Toronto and back for the day or something. Um, are you seeing that? Is business travel returning to the way it was? Well, our agency really specializes in, in more boutique um, upscale personal travel. But, leisure stuff. Um, leisure travel. But, um, you know, we do have a few a business uh, clients, but I have a lot of friends in the industry and I would say that business is, it's not back to where it was. It may never be in the same capacity. Um, however, you know, when you think about going to, you know, we were, you and I were both at a, an event last night in person, which was, which was so nice it's Great to see everybody. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, and so there is that piece. I know um, I belong to a consortium of agencies across North America and we generally have an, a national conference once a year which we did the last two years by Zoom, not the same. So, you know, we will, we're all resuming doing business travel, but I think those 
those quick flights, like you're saying one day to Toronto. Yeah. Those can be done on zoom, you know? And so you're probably going to see some, a good return to business travel, but I think a little more strategic, yeah. maybe a bit of a hybrid. And for those who are wondering, uh, Kathy and I both attended the Yem Magazine Restaurant Awards last night at the New Gorge Pavilion in Esquimalt. It was lovely. Fantastic. Uh, you know what's tough these days I'm hearing is renting a car. It, that's a yeah. thing, right? I mean, that's that's a it, problem. It's a thing. Yeah, it really is a problem. I, we were talking about it today um, at the agency because I, I was mentioning uh, speaking with you today. And uh yeah, we had a, a set of uh, young ladies that um, wasn't our clients, but uh, they were, the girls were talking about it today that went to Newfoundland uh, and they um, had a car rental all booked and paid for. They got there and it, was, um, it wasn't available. They said, oh, sorry, we're out of cars. So they ended up actually renting a U-Haul and they wow. found it was less expensive. They bought one of the, you know, one of the small um, budget vehicles yep. and they, sure. they took the whole trip and apparently saved money and it was quite, quite a great experience. So um, what I would say about that is there are other alternatives. So, you know, we'll certainly talk to one of one of our team or any anybody in the travel business and they can help you. But yeah, it's it's absolutely a, a thing. All the car agencies sold their cars when the pandemic broke out, right? They sold their cars. And, you know, every, whether it's cars or hotels or flights or cruises, everybody oversells a little bit, right? Sure. They oversell sure. a little bit because there's always attrition. Somebody doesn't show up. They, they're sort of running on those numbers. And every now and then, Everybody shows up and it happens. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next, let's talk about some specific travel destinations. Kathy Scott, Departures Travel in Oak Bay. She is the CEO, the Chief Exploration Officer with the organization. So, uh, we've, we've talked about a few places, Kathy, that, you know, Mexico was big in the beginning, Paris, London, Rome, they're all going to be popular. But Let's take a look at some of the places that people maybe haven't quite considered quite as much of. In Asia, for example, you mentioned that's reopening again. Um, the places I wrote down are like uh, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, China, Japan, India, Indonesia. Those are all reopening now, right? They're all reopening. Um, any of the Asian countries are a little softer. Um, people are a little bit more nervous. They're, you know, Some of them were hit especially hard during the pandemic. Um, so getting them back up and running um, is slower for sure um we're getting a lot of requests for bali i think again it's isolated so it's probably one of those bucket list trips that people want to do yeah, but it, uh, it feels safer and a lot of that would be family travel too right going to finally reconnect with family in asia that you haven't seen for a long time so those are absolutely those are, those are kind of feel good trips let's go south of that a little bit and down into you mentioned australia new zealand uh polynesia uh tahiti fiji places like that what's travel to there look like these days very popular I think, again, they're, they're more remote. People are looking for those really uh, once-in-a-lifetime bucket list trips, and those are certainly those destinations. I'm taking off again to Tahiti in, in October with the group, so um, there's 40 of us going. So that's, you know, indicative of, of what's happening in that area. That sounds so exotic. I mean, it, it really, really does. But that, that, it would tell me about that experience. I've, I've wanted to go. I've never been. But what's that part of the world like? It's interesting. I was talking to a couple of girls last night about it. It's one of those destinations that when you look at it in a, in a brochure or online, it looks absolutely stunning. And it, it is just, it's, it's beautiful. When you get there, it's even more beautiful. And that's, that's hard to imagine. It's something you can't capture on film. Um, the people are absolutely warm and inviting, but it's just the most beautiful, pristine part of the world. It, it's hard to even describe. Yeah. Well worth the trip. I'm imagining it smelling quite fantastic too. Oh yeah. It's just, I mean, yeah, the tropical flowers and the, yeah, it's just beautiful. Uh, I'm one of the lucky people who's actually been able to visit Africa because uh, my, my much, much better half Amanda is South African born. So we've been there to see family. Uh, Africa in general, again, maybe not a lot of people understand the opportunities and adventures there, but let's talk about Africa for a sec. Africa's super popular. We've got a lot of people um, going. Um, I'm actually personally taking a group to do a sky safari in um, February. So that's exciting. Um, but yeah, Africa's, it's just on everybody's list. And, and what we've really noticed during the last two years, people were dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. And now they're saying, let's go and let's do these longer trips before we can't. So, and while the window's there, yeah. it's nervous, right? Yeah. Some of the most populous cities in the world are actually in Africa, but it's interesting. We flew across Africa at night. Uh, across the continent from north to south and amazing stretches of it are completely dark 
There's just nobody there, but the concentration in the cities is really something else. Let's go across the ocean, South America. What's going on in South America? Tell me about travel there. Well, um, you know, it's it was a bit of a slow start for sure. I was down in Antarctica and in uh, Chile. Wow. In uh, December. And um, it was not the easiest place to get to. They were really restrictive with um, people coming and going. I mean, as everyone was, which is fair enough. But um, it was, you know, it wasn't the easiest thing to get to. But it's opening back up now. And um, I, again, I'm taking another group in uh, this November, December down to Machu Picchu and Galapagos. Mm. And um, yeah, it's the flights are back. It's opening up and, and it's a little softer. Probably a good time to go because people are still just trickling back in. Yeah. And of course, Antarctica in December is the complete opposite from us because that's the Southern Hemisphere. That's their summer if they actually get it. It is their summer. In Antarctica. Uh, just about out of time here, Kathy. I'm, I'm going to sort of do this thing that I'm sure people say to you all the time. If I was to walk in today and sit down in front of you and say, send me somewhere. I just want to go. What would you ask me? Well, first of all, are you looking for, are you looking for adventure? Or are you looking for, you know, relaxing? Because that's, there's so many different places. I mean, if, if you're asking me where I would go, that's going to maybe be different than, than where you want to go. So yeah. we ask a few more questions than that. Uh, we're cultural travelers. We've taken the little quiz thing that says, are you an adventurer or a cultural? We're, we're cultural. We're restaurants, food, art gallery people. Restaurants, food, art gallery. Wow. Well, then probably Italy is a big one for you. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I think, you know, Italy and maybe whip over to Croatia for a little bit because it's a bit more undiscovered. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I've heard a lot about Croatia. It would be brilliant for you, especially for the restaurant scene. Right on. So I guess the tips are, if you're going to travel, plan ahead. Um, I'm a big believer in using a travel agent. A lot of people go online and book their own stuff, but let's just quickly point out the advantage of using a travel agent is pretty obvious. It is. And, and it's funny, we are getting more calls than we've ever had before. Um, people who have never used a travel advisor before, but really I think we're, what I like to say is your secret weapon on the ground. If, if you're at a, if you've had all the flights canceled on you and you're over somewhere in Europe and, and you're standing in line up with 300 people um, waiting to get your, your ticket changed or trying to phone in, not going to happen. You can send us an email. We, we can go on to what we call the GDS and have you fixed while you're busy having a cocktail at the bar. That's kind of what I like to say. Which sounds really good. And I've had yeah. that circumstance happen. I forgot train tickets once. I, I went all the way to Italy and forgot the train tickets. So oh, no. the agent took care of it. Kathy Scott is the uh, Chief Exploration Officer at Departures Travel. DeparturesTravel.com is the website. They're on Oak Bay Avenue. Kathy, great to catch up and thanks for the chat today. Thanks for having me. All right. That's Chamber Chats for this time around. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you next time.